Thank you for coming to tonight. Um, we are going to begin the Town of Essex Select Board meeting for July 15th in just a moment. Um, we usually start with the Pledge of Allegiance, but we don't have a flag in the room, so we're going to wing it. Everyone's going to remember the, flat, the Pledge of Allegiance, but we don't have a flag. So, ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag. There we go. There we go. The United States, States of America. America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Channel 17, for always coming to that rescue. <laughs> Okay. Our second order of business, are there any agenda additions or changes? Evan. I have two items to add to uh, business item 5B, which is the firearms ordinance. Um, it's a revised map, which you have in front of you, and some um, change language to the ordinance that was in your packet. Um, I heard a reminder that some of the, uh, the buffer zone around some of the parks have been removed, so this is updated language to capture that. Craig, thank you for making that adjustment. We had noticed that, so I'm glad it's been attended to. Um, were there any other agenda additions or changes? No. No. Okay. I move that we uh, modify the agenda to include these two items, the map and the uh, updated ordinance language to uh, business item 5B. Is there a second? Uh, second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to the public to be heard. This is a portion of the meeting when you can speak to the board about business that is not currently on the agenda. If anybody has something to say that is not on the agenda, please feel free to stand up and speak. Yes, ma'am. Um, come, please come to the mic and give us your name. Yes, my name is Patty Davis from Nine Hillside Circle. I'm the one that moved here three years ago because of Saxon Hill Road, uh, the public road with a nice big fat no shooting zone sign. Patty, excuse me, but the, the firearms ordinance is on the agenda. This yes. portion of the agenda is for things that are not on the agenda. Yeah, this is not on the agenda. Okay. This has to do with um, statute 19304A. Oh, sorry. And it has to do with, um, uh, um, I know that the select board hires the town manager, the planning commission, you know, zoning people. I know that's your job. My feeling is I feel that the, the town elected select board does hire the town manager, but unfortunately, I don't feel the town manager is performing the duties prescribed by the town charter regarding Title 19 Highway uh, that uh, Title 19 statute, Highway 304, specifically A. I have something I can submit to you so I don't take too much time that talks about the, the powers of and the duties of the select board re regarding public class three roads in the town of Essex. Um, and I have seven statutes I have to substantiate my claim and I'm more than willing to give them to you so you don't have to listen to me rattle them off. It would be great if you could provide us with Okay. The, uh, that's it, a and I, I feel that, you know, that, that our constitutional right, Article 18, all the people of Essex, Essex and Essex Junction have a right to uh, make the select board and our town management manager accountable to the people of Essex, and we came here to recreate, and we're not going to get, we're not going to stand for having a sign taken down. He had no right to take down, and I have it substantiated that the uh, town commissioners uh, Dennis Lutz specifically uh, offered in the capital plan March of 2013 um, when the sign had to be replaced at that time. It was replaced 9-13-2013 uh, because it was faded. It had been up for 20 years. So it's not like somebody just put it up on a whim. And I have the purchase order documentation here and how much it costs, 5150. dollars Thank, Thank you. you. Please feel free to submit your documentation so we can all see it. Sure. Thanks, Patty. You're welcome. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to speak on items that are not on the agenda? Okay, thank you. We will move forward now to the first order of business, 
uh, first class liquor license approval. The select board will act as the board of liquor uh, control uh, for Outbev Inc. doing business as the Mad Taco with outside consumption permit. Are they here? They are here. Hello. Thank you for being here. And uh, board members, do you have any questions or comments regarding their application or materials? I do. Max. On page three of the application near the top where it talks about the uh, liquor control licensee education seminar, the date that's listed uh, for it is July 19, 2015, but the documentation that was supplied shows a, a certificate that says July 19, 2000. Um, I'm sorry, it says 2015, but it, the, doc the documentation of the certificate says 2017. They're good for two years valid, and my business partner and I are both current with the DLC for the next two years. We just attended another seminar. Yeah, I'm, I'm aware that they're, they're two years, but I just want to, yes, and it's still in compliance because it doesn't uh, stop until the 19th, and today's the 15th, but it would be good to make sure that... Uh, Last week, we both updated. You did, okay, yes. super. But those are both current with the DLC for another two years. Okay, great. Great. Thank you. Greg, did you have something you wanted to... We, we can update the application form yes. to capture that. And, and if I we can, can get... The, I can um, supply both copies. Please update the updated certificate. Yes. Thanks. That's all I have. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments or questions about the application? Okay. Hearing none, does anyone have any questions for the applicant? All right. Um, then, hearing none, I will accept a motion. Andy? I move that the select board approve the first class liquor license for uh, Outbev Incorporated doing business as the Mad Taco at 21 Essex Ways Suite 213 with outdoor consumption permit. I'll second that. And you, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. We are all set with that um, to approve that license. And I just want to give our standard admonition to um, purveyors of alcohol. The select board takes the issuance of liquor licenses very seriously, as should area establishments who serve alcohol. We expect you not to serve alcohol to minors, nor anyone who is obviously inebriated. We thank you for doing business in Essex, and we wish you a very successful thank year. Thank you for having us. We're very excited. Thank you. thank you. Should I turn that paperwork? Should I bring it by the town office? Absolutely. Yeah. Town clerk's yeah. office, please. I'll be back up later this week. I'll bring it back up, both, both the new certificates. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for your time. Have a wonderful evening. Me too. Okay. And a little bit of housekeeping. Um, if you have your phone on you, could you please turn it to vibrate? And also, if anyone needs to use the restroom, go through those double doors, walk through the big auditorium, and then there's a hallway with restrooms right over there by the concession stand where you usually go during the quilt show. <laughs> All right. Our next order of business is the um, is 5B, pass the revised firearms ordinance. And just so everyone knows, the word pass is the for a formality that we needed to put on the agenda according to statute. That is how we need to state what we're doing. It's not a foregone conclusion that we're passing anything, but that is the way the language was written on the agenda. So I just want to let everyone know that. Um, and I'm going to take a few moments to review where we've been and talk about what we're going to do this evening. So bear with me. This is for folks who you may have heard this already, but there's some folks in the room I don't think have been to these kinds of meetings before. So just an update so you know what to expect. This is a continuation of a select board discussion considering changes to the Town of Essex Firearms Discharge Ordinance. Tonight, the select board will discuss and deliberate a fully amended version of the ordinance. And if you don't have a copy, uh, there are copies. Are there any copies left on the back table? I'm not sure. I saw that you had put there some, were out some there. there. Yes. Hopefully, there's some copies left on the back table. Uh, after we have our uh, discussion at the select board, we will open the floor to public comments, and there'll be more on that in just a moment. After the public comment period, I will bring the discussion back to the select board table to get a sense of the board regarding all the changes to the firearms discharge ordinance. The board may then vote on passing the amended ordinance. Everybody clear on the steps that we're going to take this evening? So what we've done so far, this has been a year-long process and the select board has received a lot of input from many sources. 
We have heard from hundreds of residents at public forums, online forums, and multiple meetings, and have received and read volumes of opinion, information, resources, and concerns from all kinds of people. We also have the 2009 report from the Firearms Task Force and recommendations from three different Essex police chiefs, as well as legal opinions from the town attorney. Passions and emotions run deep in the community on this topic. We recognize the difficult nature of this discussion, and we remind everyone here tonight and watching on TV and online that it's the select board's responsibility to improve the safety of the entire town of Essex, while also preserving the quality of life, traditions, and freedoms that our residents enjoy. All right. Here are some, here's a summary of some of the work done so far. And um, at our last meeting, we discussed shooting ranges, so this is primarily about that. By Vermont statute, existing shooting ranges established before 2006 are not subject to any new regulations the board may decide to implement. At the November 5th, 2018 meeting, the select board began discussing the firearms <coughs> discharge ordinance in relation to sports shooting ranges. The board discussed and the public provided feedback on a proposed shooting range registration process intended to identify existing ranges and establish basic, basic safety precautions. At our July 15th meeting, or excuse me, July 1st meeting, right? Is that July 1st, the last meeting? June 17th. June 17th, thank you. At our June 17th meeting, the board further discussed uh, the registry idea and um, we will continue discussing that this evening. Next steps, um, tonight the board may vote to accept the amended firearms discharge ordinance. Once the board accepts an ordinance, the public hearing process begins. We will immediately warn a public hearing this evening upon assuming that we pass the ordinance tonight. By Vermont statute, we must hold one public hearing about the proposed changes to the ordinance, and after that public hearing, the select board can adopt the ordinance and it will take effect. If there are no further changes to the ordinance, we anticipate final passage to occur at the select board's August 19th meeting. Residents always have the option to challenge any newly adopted ordinance by circulating a petition calling for a townwide vote on whether to overturn the ordinance. Petitions must be signed by 5% of registered voters of the town of Essex and must be submitted within 44 days of the ordinance being passed. Currently, there are 16,077 registered voters in Essex, so 5% of that would be 804 validated signatures. The select board would then have to hold a special meeting on the question, a town-wide Australian ballot vote, within 60 days. The new ordinance would remain in effect until the results of the vote are known. So for public comment tonight, we want to hear your feedback on our discussion, and at the appropriate time, I will open the discussion for audience comments. Please remember this is a select board decision. The select board will absolutely hear what you have to say, but this is not a negotiation. We have heard your concerns and will continue to weigh your input. We may not produce the outcome you want, which we know can be excruciating to watch happen. But please be assured we hear you and we are balancing many interests. Please keep your comments respectful and brief and focus on new things we may not have heard. Do not interrupt or have side conversations while others are speaking, and please direct all comments to me as select board chair. Speakers will be given a limited time for their comments, and if time runs out, either I or Evan will cut you off. And please be respectful of others' time. If someone ahead of you makes the point you wanted to make, please just say, I agree with that person, rather than repeat it. And remember to state your name clearly when you get to the mic. Can I have a show of hands as to anyone who is interested in speaking this evening? Keep them, keep keep them, them up, up, please. Okay, I'm going to limit everyone's time to a minute, 30 seconds per person. I will let you know when it's time to speak, and Evan will keep time, and he will cut you off if you go over. So thank you for your patience and for cooperating with the rules. All right, so we have before us a, a final version of the amended firearms discharge ordinance. Greg, would you like to walk us through the changes that have been made? Sure. Um, so looking at the proposed changes to the ordinance, it uh, focuses on a few areas. First one is adding the definition of a firearm. Second is specifying when 
discharge can occur in, a, in, in and around, or sorry, excuse me, just in Indian Brook Park, Saxon Hill Forest, the 90 acre school parcel. Most of Saxon Hill is already off limits to discharge. Um, and the tree farm, Essex Tree Farm. Uh, it also looks to create conditions for outdoor shooting ranges with a requirement that range owners use a notification form to inform the town about the presence of the range. Uh, we updated the penalties for violations of the ordinance, or proposed, proposed an update to that, and some other housekeeping changes in Chapter 9, which deals with parks, just to reflect the, the changes elsewhere. Um, what's in front of you today, the, as I mentioned, the packet that went out included language about a buffer area around Indian Brook Park and Saxon Hill, the 90 acres at Saxon Hill. Um, the select board had tentatively agreed to do away with that 500 foot buffer, so the language in front of you and the map in front of you that were handed out tonight and were available up at the front of the room um, removed that 500 foot buffer. That is the summary. I'm happy to go into details or answer questions. Oh, and the, and the um, notification form has been updated as well since the last discussion from June 17th. Okay. It's scaled back a bit and not as much information being requested. Okay. And you've provided a marked up copy as well as a fresh copy Correct. of the form. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Greg. All right. So I would love to hear the select board's thoughts on the adjustments that we've made to the ordinance since our last <coughs> meeting and um, any other thoughts or questions that you might have. Max. I can start. Uh, now that the um, map and the ordinance is updated to address the 500 foot buffer, which I know we talked about uh, a number of meetings ago, and that we've been discussing this for many years to get to where we are with a lot of discussion and input um, I've read through the updated ordinance, and to me it looks like it has a lot of common sense, to me, from my perspective, a lot of common sense elements, which I think uh, are appropriate. So I'm okay with it now that the 500-foot buffer had been addressed. I just have a, I think I have a clarifying question. The, the ordinance references the, the notification form, but the question I guess I have is, is the form itself in part of the ordinance or is it approved separately or it, what's, what's the, is it's, it's. I would see it being approved separately. The, the, the ordinance references the notification form that will be provided by the town. So it'd be available in the clerk's office or the police station to, to pick up. Okay, so what we would be potentially approving tonight would be the language of the ordinance, not necessarily the language of the form, or are we approving both? I don't. Technically, you'd be approving the language of the ordinance. I think it makes sense to have a pretty good idea of what the form is going to look like at this point. Um, it could always be changed in the future, in my opinion, but I think you'd want to have a good sense of what, what you're putting out there if you're going to approve. The, the requirement for a notification form. Okay, so my, my, my one question on that, I know I sent this to you earlier, Greg, was that we had, I had commented about adding uh, known shooting ranges to the E911 database, and I just don't know whether we need to ask permission from landowners to do that or whether it would be just a part of our process to go ahead and, and, and add those in. Um, that, that was my oversight to, to forget to put that in there, so I apologize for that. Um, I spoke to Shannon Lunderville, who's our GI. GIS coordinator and our E911 coordinator. Um, she said it could work either way. It could either be an opt-in where people request a check bar, check mark, yeah, check box to join into the E911 notification registration system, or it can just be automatic, and she can update the system as as the notification forms come in. Okay, so but for the for purposes of the ordinance, we don't need to answer that question tonight. So okay, no. all right, thank you. What is your preference in terms of having an opt-in or just making it? I, I don't know. I just don't know if there's a if there's any legal ramifications to. I I, I don't know. I don't, that, that that would be my only question. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think uh, I think it would be a good idea for uh, folks who are filling out the form to recognize that they're they're. Um, I think we either need to have the checkbox to say opt-in or at least have some reference that you'll automatically be placed on the, uh, if we just go that way, to automatically placed on the E911. I'd, I'd like them to be aware of it so that if something does occur, sure. 
property an opt out too. Hmm? We could consider an opt out. I, I actually would prefer not to let them opt out if that's if that's possible. Um, so that because you know it, it's you know I I, I got the, I, I started thinking along this line because I read someplace somewhere that the state is trying to encourage GIS coordinators to document or, or E911 coordinators to document sugar shacks, and it seems to me that a shooting range is possibly more or at least as dangerous as a sugar shack. And so uh, I, was, I was hoping we could encourage folks to register their, their shooting ranges. And I would like to see it be, uh, I, I prefer it to be non-optional um, so that in case of emergency, um, uh, we can have the best response possible. So we could have uh, asked staff to add a statement at the bottom that says, you know. Assuming, assuming there's no legal concern with doing that, yeah. Okay. Andy, did you, oh, sorry, Pat. Yeah. Um, I'm actually going to tail off on something that Andy mentioned. Um, the form itself, since we're not strictly approving that tonight, um, from my knowledge, what's the mechanism if that form changes or needs to change at some point? Would that come back to an existing select board, or is that something that the clerk or the town manager can do unilaterally? I think based on the sensitivity of it, we would look to bring it back to the select board. Do you have questions or comments? Um, I have a comment. I take very, very seriously both sides of this issue because it's my job to. And so I hear your passion on both sides and I'm very, very thoughtful about all of your words and I feel confident that that's true of our entire board. And so please know that we we absolutely are, are hearing you and that it's a very difficult position to be in. And I absolutely love my community. I want to make sure that we are thoughtful throughout the entirety of the process. And I appreciate your time. Thank you, Annie. Did you have any other comments about the discharge ordinance or the form or any questions? I, I feel um, confident that we are I feel, I feel comfortable with where we're currently at. Okay. Any other questions or comments from board members? Greg. Just in response to Patrick's comment, um, I could propose some change language in the ordinance. Instead of saying a notification form provided by the town of Essex, it could be a notification form approved by the select board of Essex. Yeah, I would feel more comfortable with that language. That would be great. Around what line would you put that, Greg? Uh, oh, here it is, uh, line 90. Form that was handed out to you today, yeah. line, line 90. Okay. So I'm getting the sense of the board that you are satisfied with the point to which we've gotten with the ordinance and the form would you be okay with oh pat yeah i mean i only have one more comment not a mechanical change um but since we didn't really get clarity about the insurance inquiries um although in insurance inquiries are still a requirement on the form as being prevented the liability insurance um, just to note, I realized that my biggest concern with it was that we would be installing a, a functional block on anyone who didn't have the financial means to get that level of insurance. And that is a problem in my head. Um, and we didn't get a number for obvious reasons because we did do our inquiries and the answers were all over the place. Right. But it does appear as if there were several insurance agencies that simply don't ask about shooting ranges so if necessary while i realize that that might mean that you would need to go with a different company for liability insurance um you know it's just 
it, it's an area where I had some concern before, but knowing that there are options out there would sort of uh, alleviates that fear in my head. And certainly if someone has another take on it, I'd like to hear it. But just to, because I mentioned it last time, I wanted to clarify that in open session now. Uh, I I also felt um, more comfortable that there were a variety of channels for someone to utilize, and I appreciated the work done in that regard. Great. Okay. Chief. Um, just for clarification on the E91 issue or discussion, that's actually a, a layer that's put on the map by us. And it really would be very difficult to either opt in, opt out on a one by one basis. An example is all our fire, our fire hydrants are on a layer in an E911 map. In fact, everybody's house and house number is on an E911 map. Uh, what I would envision is that the town would make a decision either we're in or we're out. Um, and again, doing it one by one, <coughs> I'm not sure that that she would be able to do one by one updates. It's what she basically does is say, okay, we're going to do fire hydrants now. All the fire hydrants are put there. That's uploaded to E911, and now it shows on the map. Unless you download the E911 software and look at an E911 map, you don't see all those layers, and some of them are actually protected or restricted. Um, so I'm not sure where those, and Shannon would be the person to talk about that. Um, but it's not the thing where you go necessarily. Uh, uh, there's some layers that you don't see just going to the Internet and looking at it. I think one by one that would be difficult. I think you'd want to potentially say either we're going to do it or we're not going to do it uh, as a group. Thank you. That's helpful. Any further comments or questions? All right, then I think we will open up the discussion to the audience. If you would like to have something to say about our discussion, please come take a seat at the mic. When you speak at the mic, give us your name, and you will have a minute, 30 seconds to say your piece. Please feel free. I will, give you, right I will give you a warning with 15 seconds left. Please don't make me cut you off. Hope I don't stutter. Yeah. Uh, my name's Andy Doe. I live on Sleepy Hollow Road. You can address me as the chair, OK? okay. It's a group thing. <laughs> um, I have a question on shooting ranges. I have a shooting range in my property. Um, there are shooting ranges in my uh, neighborhood as well. Um, so I, my question has to do with lines 99 through 105. I'll just read them here. It said, the list of outdoor shooting ranges is intended to give the Town of Essex Police Department awareness of the location and the number of ranges within the town borders to provide public information for neighbors and future residents regarding the location of ranges to increase awareness among range owners for the need for safety guidelines and to increase awareness uh, for range owners of the impact of their ranges on surrounding properties and the necessity to maintain good relations with neighbors regarding noise, hours of operation, and what is considered a nuisance. So what I see here is I don't know what the definition of a nuisance is. Okay. All right. I've got a range next to me that shoots eight to 10 hours a day. It's a nuisance for me, but I'm not sure that that would be a nuisance for him or other people. So I'd like to see more meat in here in terms of what is a nuisance. Hmm. 15 seconds. I'm all set. You did a nice job with this one. Um, thank you for not zeroing in on hunters, because hunters are definitely not the problem with firearms. It's clearly with ranges. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Sarah Salatino. I live on Brigham Hill Road. And I just want to thank you for putting, Select Board, for putting forth this um, regulation. Um, I'm, I'm really on board with it. This is about security, not about denial of rights. Um, at my neck of the woods, Brigham Hill Road, is much more suburban um, it's since 2006, with many cul-de-sacs being punched into woods and fields allowed by the Planning Commission. Um, more being planned going forward. Many of you drove here tonight, um, but to drive, uh, 
to, to have this right, you needed to uh, train for a license and update based on your choice of vehicle, be it a beater to a sports car, you must pay insurance commensurate on your devo device. You may operate your vehicle only in, the, in certain places designated by um, the government roads. You also pay taxes on those roads. So my concern is I'm addressing the insurance po proponent component of um, th this. Vehicles can kill based on the person driving them as the people who shoot guns uh, can, kill, can, can kill. But most of, I, I really believe that people will be very safe in, in Essex and with, with the, uh, what you've proposed, it will help. Seconds. I'm sure hunting and, and shooters are safety oriented. Um, via, um, if vehicles are regulated, why not guns and shooting ranges? Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Nils Giddens, Whitcomb Meadows Lane. Um, may I ask before my time officially begins a point of clarification from the board with their approval? Sure. I've been after a map like this for months. Good to see that it's here. Can I ask, there's been some confusion. The select board truly does have authority to govern the school property, which is what I'm gonna talk about tonight. Is that official? We have the authority to determine where firearms can be discharged, including school property. Thank you. In that case, I will address uh, my comments to the school property. There is no scale on this map, but thankfully the regulations provide one. The straight line on the Jericho Essex town line is stated to be 1,900 feet. And so I have three, basically three questions for the select board. Can, can the select board provide an honest, good answer as to why any shooting could, should be allowed in that school property when you can see that it's uh, approximately only a quarter mile from the Deer Crossing development where there's already been a stray bullet embedded in a structure. That's question one. Question two, can the select board provide me a good and logical answer why any shooting at any time should be allowed in the school property zone when it's directly adjacent to the Saxon Hill recreational area that we are visioning on now that is filled with people all year round and increasing commercial traffic. Three, can the select board provide a good and logical answer as to why any shooting could be, should be allowed in this relatively small, irregularly shaped parcel that I'll call either an irregular octagon or a Z-shaped plot in view of the difficulties with signage. It is very complicated up there. I am aware of the geography. Thank you very much, and I look forward to the answers to those important questions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Kay. I live on Lost Nation Road. Uh, I just want to throw out a few things here. First of all, we've been over this for a year. There's no credible data that supports uh, the moves we're talking about doing, specifically with the registration and what's on the form. We're solving the proverbial problem that does not exist, or at least going about it in the wrong way. 13 VSA 1025 already addresses reckless endangerment. It even specifically discusses uh, firearm use, and EPD can summon people if they have a dangerous range under that VSA. You've already touched on a lane, but regulating shooting ranges is disregarding VSA 2991 Section 8, so we got to be careful what is regulating and what is not. Over our time, uh, Place Speak, the online forums, despite 60% of the respondents being from the current no shooting zone, with that going really against those of us who actually live in the areas of discussion, Indian Brook, Saxon Hill, and the North Central area all had a majority voting for no change. Sticker boards at the first meeting greater than 90% of the stickers showed support for no change, and we've seen over the last year as well uh, meeting up with those over the select board meetings. Uh, I've heard people feel intimidated, and I can understand that if you don't want confrontation, but the survey itself had no written or in-person in interaction, and so people couldn't even do that, then obviously they don't care too much about this uh, specific point. 
So really, really what this adds up to is I think we've got seconds. anti-gun agenda and opinions that are unsubstantiated leading us down a dangerous road which could lead to litigation as a taxpayer. I don't want to see my tax money and I doubt anyone else in here go and putting our town to litigation for months on end against something that is violating the law, regardless of what your personal opinion is. Okay. It's a great in our country that we Thank can you, disagree on opinions, but it's better uh, that we have laws that up, protect Mike. it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Ed Wilbur, uh, Browns River Road. Um, I wanted to address a few things. Uh, number one was the insurance issue. Um, I feel that's going to put a uh, really undue burden. Um, I realize you guys keep saying this is not a registry, but in actuality, it is going to be a registry. There's going to be documentation. There's going to be records kept. And if insurance companies do want to look into it and see if you have a range on your property, um, they can and would drop your insurance, which would force you to uh, seek insurance other places, which would in turn not accept you because they're going to know that your insurance was dropped because you have a shooting range on your property. Um, I, I know a lot of people don't think that's going to be an issue, but it absolutely will. Uh, the other issues that I have uh, is that we keep referring to uh, the NRA range manual, um, which in fact um, states that neither the reader of this source book or anyone else is to rely on any representation, drawing, or statement made by this source book. Rely on this source book to design, build, construct, or operate a range rely on any claim that a particular range is in compliance or designed, built, constructed, or operated according to pursuant to this source book. So basically, the range book itself that we're being told that we need to uh, construct our ranges to uh, tells us implicitly that we're not even to use that as a guideline unless we seek legal sources uh, to seconds. make sure that it's, it's in compliance um, and that we also have architects and engineers design uh, the course for us. So you say that we're not going to be limiting people's rights or ability to do it, but in fact you will be uh, putting undue financial burden on people that do want to uh, have ranges on their property. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next, please. Don't be shy. It's Kelly Adams and I live at Kings Court. Um, I'm grateful for this opportunity and for the work of the select board and for our participatory democracy. Um, I think we come together in societies over the millennia because doing so helps us be safer together in many, many different ways. And I think that these proposals are ways for us to help each other be safer together in society Accidents do happen. My children play on these fields. I walk my dog on these paths. And I think these are reasonable, reasonable ways for us to work together as a society, each meeting each other in the middle. The community is changing. The um, zoning and the density is changing. And I'm grateful for the recommendations of three police chiefs. Thank you. My name is Randy Draper. I, my wife Sally and daughter Whitley live at 184 Towers Road Extension, which is in the blue zone. And we do have a backyard firing range occasionally across the street from us. Um, I believe I'm on the record of supporting the changes to the ordinance regarding the firing ranges. I'd like to underscore that we are very much in favor of all the changes to the ordinance across the board. Um, but I also want to thank the board for listening to us over these many months and to taking into consideration all the concerns of all the people who are here in this room and the homework that you've done to get us to this point. Um, so regardless of how you vote tonight or in the future, I personally wanted to give you a uh, thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hi, uh, Ben Bro. My family owns land on Lost Nation Road. Um, when we hear about needing licenses and uh, insurance to drive a car, we're talking about on publicly owned roads. What we're talking about here is recreation on privately owned property that you shouldn't have to show a board that you have liability insurance for that. I'm once again going to reiterate what I've said in other meetings that the facade of this being simply a notification of shooting ranges is ridiculous. When you talk of creating conditions and establishing requirements, that my friends is regulation. With this regulation, this municipality will be greatly overreaching the authority that has been delegated to them by the state of Vermont with regards to this topic. If this is how the board chooses to proceed, I will look forward to the day that this blatant overreach is corrected by the courts. Thank you. Thank you. Looks like someone's coming to the mic and then the person who had their hand up back there. Sir, are you going to come speak? Oh, sorry. My name is Lee Phillips. I live in the village, so I don't have a range, and it doesn't directly impact me. I do have a couple of questions, though. Um, as I'm reading this, it looks like the person who owns a range is going to be responsible for <coughs> notifying and possibly making changes if an abutting landowner makes changes to his or her property, if they put in a pool, if they subdivide, if they put an addition on their house, something like that. And I'm curious as to why there might be an extra burden on the person who owns the range if a neighbor decides to make a change to their home. If the range is there first, why do they have to make a change? Why can't that person be denied a permit to an addition that's going to impact the range or something like that. Um, the other question I have, or a statement I have to make, um, talks is goes to food insecurity. There are people in this town who are actually hunting in Indian Brook and in Saxon Hill. They're not shooting for trophy deer. They're shooting squirrels, and they're sh they're they're feeding them to their family. And I've talked to some of the board members, the previous board, about this. It's really sad. I didn't know you could eat squirrel <laughs> until I met seconds. some of these people. But I hope you keep that in mind when you restrict the time that people can shoot. There are people who are literally shooting squirrels and feeding them to their children year-round. Please take that into account. Brian Murphy, 187 Towers Road Extension. Um, this process has been drawn out for a long period of time, and so there's a different exchange of information. Um, I brought out a map at a meeting. I think it was pretty illustrative of what we're talking about. We're talking about real problems, not hypothetical. Sarah Salatino is talking about a real problem. Um, so it galls me to hear that we're talking about hypothetical problems that don't exist. They're real. And um, it has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. I'm a big fan of the Second Amendment. It has to do about safety. You have a right to own a gun. You simply don't have a Second Amendment right to point it at my property. If you have a safe uh, uh, firing range, I'd be the first to support your right to shoot it. And I know folks, and I'm not going to name them here, who have shooting ranges, and I, and I know they have safe ranges, and I support that. I understand their concern that there may be some regulation they have to deal with. But if you have a safe range, you should be comforted that you know your neighbors are not going to be endangered by that. Um, there are also shooting ranges, just so we don't lose sight of it, in Jonesville, Williston, Underhill, and Charlotte. There's, there's uh, shooting ranges nearby. But anyways, if you have a safe shooting zone, I don't think you have anything to worry. But we could talk about this map. I'm happy to engage anyone seconds. after this meeting about that. Mark Redman, Marion Avenue, and um, I'm in favor of the ordinance. I hope you pass all elements of it in terms of shooting ranges. I, too, am going to guess that the, probably the vast majority of people who have shooting ranges know how to do it safely and responsibly and reliably. Uh, but even if 95% of them do, I'm worried about the 5% who do not. 
like the people who set up a shooting range 10 years ago and shot and killed Dr. Rice in his home. Or the person, when Brian Murphy showed his map a couple of months ago, even those who are hunters and those who have shooting ranges gasped when they saw that map and that his house is right in the line of fire. So that's why we need, in my opinion, to regulate these. It's why we need stop signs. It's why we have speed limits. It's why we have regulations for the people who are not reliable and responsible. So I do hope that you pass this ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. Breck Norton, Sand Hill Road. I I missed the last meeting, and it doesn't say on here what you're trying to require for liability insurance. Can you tell me what that number is? $500,000. You only need $50,000 of liability insurance on your car. How many people get killed by cars every year in Vermont, and how many people get killed by guns every year in Vermont? That doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next, please. I'm Patty Davis again. I lost my reading glasses, so bear with me. I just want to respond to uh, a couple of speakers back. Um, and that's fine, you know, that I think it's okay that we have different opinions. I just want you to know I think you did a great job, too, working on this. And I fully understand that we, the residents, may challenge the new firearm ordinance by circulating a petition which must be signed by 5% of the town's registered voters, 804 validated signatures submitted within 44 days of ordinance passage. The select board would then hold a special meeting and a town-wide Australian ballot vote within 60 days. That is what I think we really need, in my opinion. State law needs to keep up with the increase in residential communities that we have expanded into places where hunting occurs, like public roads. Having the town, uh, well, anyway, that's all I have to say. Um, the town roads really need an ordinance in this town. You lack it. It's smaller towns have a town ordinance much more comprehensive than the town of Essex. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Hello and thank you. I don't envy select word Irene Renner. I don't envy select board members having to get up to speed on all this material, having done it myself for the past 10 years. My comments reference lines 61 through 65 of the proposed ordinance. As I read it, there continues to be a 500-foot year-round safety zone around Indian Brook Reservoir. I believe the reason for that is because the main trails around that reservoir are part of that safety zone. I would ask that you go take a look, take a walk or two around the trails at Saxon Hill. They're very different in the school parcel. There's no such safety zone there, and I believe there should be such a zone designated before we allow shooting to be delineated in that area or to be prohibited in that area for certain times of the year. Thank you. else I think who please uh, before I uh, Brad Kennison Bixby Hill Road before I uh, issue my statement um, I filed a document with the deputy town manager on June 10th uh, and it had the 2019 proposed deer hunting seasons they just um, issued a uh, calendar with the 2019 uh, deer season um, if I could may I give that to you? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you. And I might note on that, I'm sorry. Is it a clarification or are you ready to start your statement? I'm sorry? Are you, are you doing some clarification? Are you ready to start your statement? I, I can, yes, one, clar one clarification, okay? 
The, the, the uh, new proposed deer season, archery season, starts September 15th. I might note that 40% of the deer taken in Essex are taken by archery. So when you consider the hunting seasons in the park, you might want to consider that because the uh, um, county forest are recommended deer hunting in um, in the park to maintain, you know, to prevent uh, overbrows. So my statement tonight. <coughs> um, the impetus for the select board proposal and backyard shooting ranges stems from complaints that a few residents may be operating firearms in an unsafe manner. On the other hand, past and present select board members have stated unequivocally that they believe most of us in the shooting sports community to be safe and are not concerned about us. In conversation with Chief Gary, he stated it was unlikely he could obtain prosecution of these individuals because of the state's attorney's caseload. At the last select board meeting, I suggested that the chief, the town manager, the select board chair meet with the state's attorney, Sarah George, to garner support for prosecution violators. I've taken this step further and spoken with the state's attorney that prosecuted Professor Reese's case, and he stated if Essex PD brings a legitimate case before him, he will prosecute. To deal with the root cause of your concern, you now have recourse to deal with the issue. There's no excuse. If the select board and SXPD choose not to pursue pr prosecution of these violating, of those violating current law, but instead pursue their mandatory registration and its onerous requirements, it clearly demonstrates a willful disregard for the rights of law-abiding citizens. The select board has stated Second. they value our opinion. However, not one of our recommend recommendations exists in their proposal. Clearly, this is a select board ag agenda designed to squelch the use of guns in our community. We as a shooting sports community will not sit idly by and watch the select board oh, trample you, on Brad. the rights of its citizens. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Yves Dubief, Six Forest Road. Uh, I want to thank the board for all the work that they've done. I've been to most meetings. Uh, I'm, I'm a big advocate of uh, range regulation because I use one uh, every week, and but that's at the firing range in Ethan Allen. I'm also an engineer. I know the, by design, because I've worked with the Department of Defenses both here and in other countries, how far a bullet can, can fly. And the range, anyone who's certified at the range knows how far a bullet can fly, and it's much beyond where the target is. So while I appreciate the concern of existing owners of firing range, accident may happen, and what is initially in, in your property might travel much beyond your property. So I, I really encourage the range owner if you want to keep your sport alive, you've got to help the select board meeting. Make sure that we can shut down the ranges that are really unsafe. I love shooting at the range in Ethan Allen. Why? Because it is absolutely safe. I coach kids 15 seconds. As, as young as eight to shoot. I have no problem with that because we have rules and regulation and we know exactly when, where a stray bullet can, can land and we know no one is there. Thank you. <clears throat> Would anyone else like to speak? Sir. Kendall Chamberlain, Old Pump Road. I just want to point out that the town of Richmond just uh, came up with a town forest. They ran into the same issue. They were going to prevent firearms and hunting on the forest. Their residents got together. They listened to the minority that is in Richmond that hunts and shoots, and they totally eliminated any restrictions on firearms in their town forest. I just want to point out that I used to think that I lived in a small Vermont town. I don't think I live in a small Vermont town anymore. And I don't feel like you're paying any attention to myself, who is a minority, it sounds like, in this town. Uh, but you better be prepared for some litigation, because you've heard it right here from a number of different people. So that's all I want to say. Thank you. <clears throat> D. 
David Scopin, um, Skyline Drive. That's correct. You no longer live in small town Vermont. You live in a suburb. It's a glorified suburb, but it's a suburb. And frankly, I think there are a number of us that feel that the only place you should discharge a firearm is at a safe, secure, well-managed range. And I am certain that you could collectively get together and create such an entity, and then you would eliminate all the hassle. If you have the luxury of walking out back and firing off a couple shots, those days are going to be gone soon. You might as well prepare now because it's not going to be long. And you will realize that, no, you're not in a small town. You're in a suburb. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? Sir. You want to be last. Okay. Well, can't guarantee that. Can't right. guarantee that. <laughs> um, Roger Haskins, Foster Road. Uh, my question and or concerns is the uh, definition of a firing range. I don't see very much text on your paper about the definition of a firing range. Uh, you did add a definition of a firearm, which was very good. But if uh, a lady in the north side of town who owns 10 acres of land goes out every third year and, and fires a deer rifle <coughs> three times, to see that it hasn't changed since the last time she did it three years ago at a target that she put up on her hill, next to her hill. Does she have a firing range? That's my question. What's the definition? <clears throat> How many bullets can you fire a year and not have a range? How many, can you fire just one bullet in the round and now you have a firing range? I do not know. And I don't see it in your definition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? So everyone had an opportunity to say what they felt. If that is the case, seeing no one else, I'm um, okay. Come on up. <laughs> Didn't realize how short a minute and a half was. Um, before before you go, I'm sorry. I, could, I have my readers so on. Anybody so else wants to go you. before me? Has yeah. anyone who hasn't already spoken? want to speak because that's what we're limiting it to. If there's anyone who hasn't already spoken, sir, I think we're going to need to limit it to folks who haven't spoken. If you have further comments, though, you're welcome to, to drop them off at the table or email them to us separately. Daryl Montague, I live on Pettengill Road. I actually own the Pettengill Farm. We've been shooting up there since, well, the Pettengills were pups, which is 18 God knows what. This issue isn't, shouldn't, I mean, should you be able to discharge in Essex Junction? Pro, you know, there's lots of areas, probably not. But those of us that have private ranges and whatnot, you gotta consider something before you decide to vote on something. What is private domain? What is public domain? What you do in your private land is up to you. Where do I keep a gun? It's on my private domain, whether it's on your person, in your car, or on your property, and what you do with it there is there. The concern is not up to you to regulate. It's not up to the NRA to regulate. There's already a law that says, uh, laws that say you can't go out and shoot a gun in your yard and have bullets leave your property, period. It's that simple. Why is this complicated? You try to tell me what I can and can't do for berms and stuff, whatever, you're gonna pay for them if, I, if you decide I need them bigger? I don't think so. When I decide to shoot, now I've been shooting on my property forever, I own Vermont Target Sports, I run the range, and yeah, a lot of it's over the town line, some of it is, some of it isn't, some of it doesn't apply to you. But, I'm not gonna to be told when and how I can shoot. Sure. What happens when you decide to go out there with a night scope or whatnot? 
The answer to the lady saying is, you regulate the car? No, you don't, because you can drive your car on your property and you don't have to register it. You don't have choice of what we do on our private domain. It's that simple. Thank How about you. the town support? You support hockey, Your you support baseball, up, you sir. support soccer, you support whatever. Thank How about you. the town support a, a, Montague, your a, time a shooting up. thing or whatnot? My time Thank you. hasn't begun. Thank you. Trust me on that. Would anyone else like to speak? Come on down. Uh, Earl Barber, Two Bobo Link Circle. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot to digest in one, my first and only meeting, but, uh, <laughs> but but I would agree that you know times are changing. Everybody's opinion of what is safe is going to be different, and it does need to be regulated. Uh, it's just time because it's just congested. It's not <clears throat> technology's changed, uh, firearms changed. Zoning's changed. I mean, I can't put up a dynamite factory on my property because it may affect my neighbors. You wouldn't allow that. Uh, same because it wouldn't stay on my property. That's the problem with the shooting ranges. The bullets can leave the property uh, unless it's well maintained, and apparently it's not because we've had accidents. So for people who have gun ranges and say that they know what they're doing, it's safe then why do we have all these incidents, a death even? Okay, it's, it needs to be regulated because safety is not defined. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> is there anyone else who has not spoken, would like to speak? Okay. I thank you all for your very heartfelt testimony we really appreciate it. We have listened. We're going to take the conversation back to the select board. And after that, we will have a vote. All right. Select board, Max. I would like to add some items to um, the definition section, including, um, if we could. Could you do a line number, please? Yeah, I think it's. Uh, Ooh, what is it? Uh, 14 for the definitions. As definition of firearm, I'd like to include uh, definition, if we could, of uh, of nuisance. What a nuisance is, if there is a definition of that, and if we can better define what an outdoor shooting range is, because I um, there's a whole spectrum of them, and if if it's possible to better define what those are, I think it would be good to include. Greg, I see your hand. Um, nuisance we can look into on uh, line 85. Outdoor shooting range means an outdoor shooting range, outdoor firing range, or other open property on which persons may discharge a firearm for purposes other than hunting. Okay, and that, that, that could range from one bullet uh, mm -hmm. per mm -hmm. year to many. Okay, so it's already covered there. Then I, I, I would say then the, uh, to, if we could, in, if you could look into the nuisance definition. Please. Um, continuing on that thought, Chief, can we get a brief description of what you would consider? Is, is there an ordinance describing what a nuisance, nuisance is? Yeah. I, I think, if I may, this sec section 90, line 99 to 105, um, the gentleman who brought up the question about what is considered a nuisance, you know, if you read that last <coughs> clause that says uh, increase awareness of range owners of the impact of their ranges on surrounding properties and the necessity to maintain good relations with neighbors regarding noise, hours of operation, and what is considered a nuisance. That to me is the part about maintaining good relations with neighbors. If you have a neighbor who is flexible and says, yeah, go ahead and shoot whenever, that's fine. But if you have a neighbor who says, look, I have kids who are sleeping between 1 and 3 p.m. Could you just not fire that during that time? That works. I would rather not be quite so prescriptive and leave that up to the folks who are abutting the ranges. That's my personal opinion. Annie? I, I would like to say that that's great. And I don't think we can 
do much that's different. But I do think we need to keep in mind that those are challenging conversations for people to have, to say the very least. Sure. So at what point would someone be able to go get some assistance in that regard, and what does that look like? Right. I would think that would vary from case to case, but if a neighbor is not approachable or a neighbor is making the conversation difficult, then that would be an opportunity to come seek assistance from the town, perhaps. Or from the, that, that's, I think, mm, okay, fair. It's up to neighbors to work these kinds of things out. We, we can't be, in my opinion, we can't be prescriptive about every aspect of how they live their lives. And I mean that in both ways. Sure. Andy? I, I, I don't think we can leave the definition of nuisance up to negotiation between neighbors. I don't know how you enforce that. Um, it, it, if you're going to have a criteria that includes a nuisance factor, you've got to be able to define it, I think. You know, there, you know, from a, you know I, I just don't know how you enforce it. Somebody puts their foot down and says, "No, I don't want to hear a single gunshot," because they're all nuisances. That that's not appropriate, I don't think. So I, I you know, how do you, you know, what do you do with that? Um, okay, Chief. I think this is talking about what the range intends to. I don't see anywhere in there that you're enforcing violations of nuisances, violations of noise. That would be handled, noise would be handled under our current noise ordinance. So I don't see this as regulating that, that this is talking about, I believe, like a vision statement of what this was supposed to do. But I don't believe in the ordinance there's anything in there that talks about enforcement of those things. Another option in this, con well, does anybody else have any thoughts about the topic of nuisance? Uh, I mean, I'm just reading through. I actually, I agree with Chief Gary. Um, I mean, it's not, uh, we have to read the entirety of the paragraph, I think, to get an idea for this. This is, you know, just, as he said, vision statement. Uh, I think it's probably the best way of putting it. It's not meant to define what X person and Y person consider to be nuisances. It's just taken as a whole is um, you know the increased awareness of range owners on the impact of their ranges etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm -hmm. so since we're not enforcing anything by the definition of nuisance I don't see any problem with keeping it in there okay yeah, another possible option if this is not something we can agree upon is to remove that portion and just say good maintain good relations with neighbors regarding noise and hours of operation period I want to clarify, there was a question about, about uh, bow season earlier. I mean, our definition of firearm specifically says that bow and arrow is not considered a firearm. Right. So there is no restriction to the archery deer season in, we're not, we're not shutting down hunting, we're shutting no. down, we're saying you cannot, can't discharge a firearm in those, uh, right. between those dates. So um, archery season never, never closes in the parks. Just to be clear on that, you, you, you had stated earlier that a lot, of the, a lot of the deer were taken during archery season and we're not restricting archery at all in the parks. It, yeah, in the, def, the definition of a firearm, it specifically says that bow and arrow is not considered a firearm. What about the school property? What about the school properties? Uh, how are they covered here? Well, they are included in the prohibited areas designated. So they're all, all the entirety of school properties are within the no shoot? I, I think there may have been some confusion. I think the reference for school properties was specific to the Saxon, Saxon Hills, Hill. like right. school property uh, because the school right. uh, donated that land to the town <coughs> last <time. coughs> Saxon Hill parcel we're talking I'm pretty sure the gentleman was speaking about the 90-acre school parcel at Saxon Hill, yes. <coughs> okay, so 
Is that where the schools are located? Correct. Thank you. Andy? Um, I, I expressed concern about this last time, and I, 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 I had hoped we get some, some dollar numbers about the liability insurance cost. Um, you know, I, I think the question that was asked to the insurance companies is what would you do if someone identified that they had a shooting range on their property? The question wasn't that, that we, didn't, we didn't ask the question how much would $500,000 of liability cost. And you know, with, uh, although we've said you know there's there's options out there where if your insurance company drops you, you can go to a different insurance company. Um, I, I don't think that's a a, a reasonable s solution to say you know if you want to have a shooting range, you've got to go f find an insurance company that's willing to insure you. Um, it seems you know I, I would think that you you know it, it's just a question of. It's a, it's a personal choice. I said this at the last meeting. I think the, the amount of liability insurance you carry is a personal choice. Um, and um, I'm concerned about, although, and, I, and, and I'm, I'm a little conflicted here because I'm not sure because we're not approving the form tonight, but should we discuss it? I, I, maybe I'm. I think we should absolutely discuss the form. At the moment, we're still on the ordinance, but we should talk about the form. <coughs> Okay, should I defer the, my comments then, or? No, I think, but it, I'm, I'm, I think you're I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I, I believe that if, if an individual wants to carry liability insurance on their property, that it's up to them to determine how much liability insurance they need. And I'm, I'm not in favor of requiring uh, the high, high value of insurance that we've requested. I'm I think, um, Two precedents existed that the staff based this suggestion on, which were in Texas and North Carolina, that both require $500,000 in liability insurance on ranges. And the other, the other aspect of this, I think, is that we want to ensure that if something does happen to someone as a result of an accident on a range, that the range owner has the wherewithal to make that person whole in some way. And if they don't have insurance, that may not be able to happen. Just another argument. Yeah, I'm, com I'm personally comfortable having that in there, considering that uh, even in Texas and, Sa and North Carolina and others have that for the reasons that uh, I believe that you just talked about. Let's hold on that one. <laughs> Sir. Sir. Thank you. We're going to have the conversation is at the board level. I appreciate your frustration and not commenting. So let's put that on hold until we get to the form. I, I didn't, I, it wasn't clear to me that we were going to. I think we're going that. back and forth because it's so deeply interrelated that we kind of can't help it. Are there any other questions or comments on the amendments to the ordinance that we have before us? Um, Andy. Yeah, at, at one point we had, uh, and, and maybe we're, we're past this and I shouldn't try to go back, we had, we had talked about allowing small game hunting, um, but it sounds like uh, um, I think we're past that, so I shouldn't. I mean, the, the date range has been pretty narrowly focused. Um, sorry, should go back. We did, we did get a consensus of the board on the yep. date range yep. a while back. And, we, and there are food pantries that are available in our mm -hmm. community for mm -hmm. people that uh, could use them. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we move on to the form? Oh, excuse me. Bill. I have a, I was looking for this about the nuisance question. Um, in 2006, when the legislature changed the law, that's what the did the uh, grandfather decree 2006 shooting ranges? They also amended the statute regarding nuisance actions. And, and only an abutting property can bring a nuisance action. Bill, could you come closer to a microphone, please? Only an abutting property owner can bring a nuisance action based upon a shooting range. Furthermore, if you move to the nuisance, 
you move and the shooting range was established prior to your acquisition of the property, you have, there's a presumption that it's not a nuisance and that you can rebut that presumption only by showing that the activity has a noxious and significant interference with the use and enjoyment of your property. So it's a pretty tough standard. So you're saying that if an existing range has a, a new neighbor and the new neighbor considers it a, a nuisance, it has to be a deeply significant nuisance to bring a claim. Right, to rebut the presumption that it's not a nuisance. There's a presumption that it's not a nuisance. Okay. I'll let you know. That's great. I, I know I'm not being very definitive in my statements, but um, this information is interesting to me. That if you have a registered range and then you get a new neighbor, they're moving to a known situation. So I would think that that, I'm sorry to speak, I'm sorry I did it like that, I didn't mean to. I was just being thoughtful. Uh, I should be speaking to Elaine. Uh, it, it's interesting to me that it's, it's a concept <coughs> whereby you registering your range gives you a, 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 a slightly more level of comfortability to know that. Am I, am I understanding this correctly? Yeah, keep going. I think I know. We're getting around going. a little uncharted waters here, but I'm, I'm feeling like there's a bonus here for both sides. If you're moving into a property that has a, a registered range next door, you're making a decision to live there. you will have known ahead of time that the range existed. Right. Mm -hmm. As opposed to now, you wouldn't know unless right. you knocked on doors or something. Right. right. I know I've been a little vague. I'm struggling internally with all of my thoughts, and I, I don't want to. We're here to hear your thoughts. Well. <laughs> all right. Why don't we move on to the form? Bill, thank you for that. That was really helpful. Based on the uh, conversation we had at the June 17th meeting, staff has updated the form, so you have a, a red-lined version, and then you have a clean version at the end of the section of the packet. So does anyone have any questions about what the, how the form stands now? And this form is online on the town's website for the board meeting materials for tonight. <coughs> So Andy, you're, we still have a question about insurance. Were there any other questions or comments or concerns about the form? The form was updated uh, based on what I thought uh, we talked about. Okay. Uh, and I said before, and I'll say it again, that I think the uh, insurance piece is uh, a should be a requirement. I think it uh, it just makes sense to me. To have that in there and again it's uh, by looking at other existing ones that are out there we identified the ones in Texas and North Carolina that also asked for the 500,000 for uh, similar reasons it, it seems to be common sense to me any other thoughts or comments on the form itself Andy so the the way the form is Stated right now, it asks for a police signature, and the only question is whether or not the form is complete. And that's that's our intent, right? So there's no judgment as to the safety or not of the uh, shooting range. Is that correct, or am I misunderstanding this? Correct. And actually, Greg, if you wouldn't mind walking us through the administrative process of this form so that we can have a sense of how that will work. That would be very helpful. Sure. Sorry to put you on the spot. That's okay. um, So we would have the form available online uh, <coughs> town clerk's office, probably at the police station as well. Um, the town clerk's office would be handling almost like a liquor license. They would be the, the 
deposit repository for the forms. Um, they would accept them. They would send them to the police for review. The police would look at the application, see if the form is complete, see if the site plan is, is um, captures the uh, what should be shown in the list of items on there. Um, they would make sure that there's proof of insurance and, and any other requirements of the form. Uh, if the police deem it complete, they would then send it back to the clerk's office. They could get um, captured or recorded as a complete form. Okay. Is that helpful, Andy? Yeah, but, but how does this, like, you know, the, the, there's a map that somebody showed before that shows a shooting range <coughs> over the house in the, you know, in the downstream of the bullets. Um, but there's nothing on here that would prevent that map from being approved, would it? We're not approving anybody's range. Right. We're asking them to make us aware of its existence and to give us an, a description of the conditions. And we're asking the range owner to certify that they are certain that projectiles fired in their range will stay within their property. And so that's the extent of our authority in this particular case. If the police, are, when they review, like Max said, just like with a liquor license, they'll review the application to make sure there aren't any issues. If they have an issue with that, then they can go back to the owner and say, this isn't, this isn't complete in our estimation. There's things missing that would make it safer. Chief, do I have, is that an accurate? So you just said that there would, a judgment would be made as to whether or not doing something would make it safer. And is, I mean, the fact that we're asking the police department to make a judgment, does that give us any liability, establish any liability? Bill, would you mind taking that for us, please? I'm concerned if you start certifying these ranges as safe that you're exposing yourself to, to liability. There's a concept called the public duty doctrine, which basically says you've got a duty to all the citizens of the town of Essex, but it's a duty to all is a duty to none. It's only when you go after particular individuals and you accept responsibility for an individual that you lose that protection uh, from liability. Maybe a clarification. <coughs> We're asking people to notify us that they are operating a range on their property. We are not asking the police to determine whether they're safe. Does the information that they've provided accurately depict what is out there? That's all the, that's all the information we want. We'll put it on our <coughs> registry. Any property owner in adjacent can you know, maybe ask a question or where are the ranges around this property? We can provide information. We cannot determine whether something is safe. I think one of the things uh, one of the gentlemen mentioned, even the NRA in their pamphlet does not want you to, to rely on them to claim that they're safe. That's telling you what you need to know about this. The ordinance is and the requirement is the bullets are not to leave your property. It is the property owner's responsibility to set up whatever they're setting up so those bullets stay on their property. We're making no determination. Asking another question. Of course. So, uh, Evan, you mentioned that uh, uh, property owners or potential property purchasers could, could ask us for information about surrounding properties, uh, whether there are shooting ranges on them after, once we have this, this list put together. How, are, how will people know that that list exists? There's nothing gonna be attached to the deeds or anything, so there's no title search or anything that's gonna tell you you have a range next door. Somebody would have to know to ask that question, right? It'd be a matter of public record. Record they could ask. But they just have, just they as if they know. could ask, they have, they have to know enough to ask, right? And it, but then there's no, there's nothing that would trigger 
somebody asking that question unless they somehow if it's a concern of a future it. homeowner who's looking around for a place to live and they want to make sure they're either moving to a place that has ranges so that they can also have one or they want to be in a place that doesn't have them that that would be something that they would want to research we're well, not going to go out and advertise yeah and I, I bought a house in Essex 20 years ago it never occurred to me to ask if any of my neighbors could have shooting ranges it's not it's not something somebody's gonna uh, gonna think of so I'm, I'm it's a personal I'm, preference if someone I'm, wants to find out they'll ask yeah yeah okay maybe I was stupid for not asking but uh, no, I'm not sure too no, many no. I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry I, I, <laughs> it's not a common question probably right right and so, so I'm 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 I'm, I'm seeing the I'm, I'm losing sight of the value of of, 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 of doing this um, unless again it's to put it into 91 e 911 and so yeah. people know where emergencies are <coughs> um, sure. yes that is that is one of the reasons for that is for our police and public safety to know where they are also because of the 2006 rule you need to have some base you have a date a date so line, right? sometime in the future if the state decides in their infinite wisdom to change the law from 2006 to 2022 what was here what is not here what was the <coughs> after we would have our own database you have documentation of when a, when a shooting range was recognized to have been established based on its registration date yes thank you any other questions or comments on the form? Any questions or comments on the map? Because I'm assuming this map will be accompanying our documentation of this. Yeah. I appreciate Shannon's adjusting the, the buffers. That's extremely important. And this map is very clear. So that's a good thing as well. All right. So, if I recall correctly, the only change that we have been asked to make up to the form is to add a statement saying that the location of the range will be indicated on the E911 database. Is that correct? Did anyone have any additions that I'm missing? So then I, we, I'd like to remove the insurance requirement. So Okay, so that, that's what I'm asking. So you're interested in removing the insurance requirement. Um, based on comments so far, I think Max is not in favor of that. Pat and Annie, do you have any thoughts about the insurance requirement? Um, I mean, like Andy, I would like a, a number with the largest concern I have is that we're setting a barrier in place for those who may not be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. Someone is wealthier, they'll be able to afford a half a million dollar rider on their insurance policy, which means that we, by enacting this, um, you know, may be unfairly targeting part of the population who don't have the ability to pay, which I don't think is the intent at all. I mean, the intent is for safety, or excuse me, as you mentioned, not for safety reasons, to make sure that there is some sort of recompense if something does go wrong. Um, so without a solid number, I'm really tossing up in my head whether or not we should include it, even though I recognize the extreme value and realize why we use this number. I just, I, I don't like the thought that this is going to eliminate people from having a shooting range who make under $20,000 a year or under $25,000 a year because they just wouldn't be able to afford it. Any thoughts? I would like to hear your thought before, if I can, is that right? Yep. Yeah. Um, I am not in favor of putting a dollar threshold on this. I could get an insurance policy from Harrods or I could get an insurance policy from Allstate. It's up to me, the bells and whistles and the extent of the rider. Um, I think what we just want to make sure is that there is enough coverage and that the range owner is cognizant of the potential for risk and therefore is covering themselves for it. 
So it's not up to us to determine the dollar value of that, but I think we should require it. Annie? Um, just so that I, under I understand you, are you saying that it should not be an expected number? No, I'm saying the liability threshold should be $500,000, but the policy itself could cost anything depending upon who you go to. So I don't want to put a limit or a requirement about dollars. I don't want to, I don't want to, oh. I don't want to remove it because I'm a, I'm a concerned of the cost of the policy. I'm, I want to keep it because I'm concerned about the recompense of someone who may be injured. I understand. I, I think what we're, what I'm understanding that I'm hearing, not from you, from maybe Patrick, is that we'd like to hear what that might cost. That was the initial intent. Andy had asked for that information. Right. And when staff did the research, they discovered that it was all, all over the place. different things. In terms of would they even cover it or I, not I even ask. I read that and I understood it. I just was not clear that the question, but, but maybe I'm redoing something we already just did. I, so I, I understood when I read okay. about the insurance that. So at this point, the question is, do you feel that we should keep this requirement on the form? Right, but I also wonder if we ask the question about what that might cost from a variety of places, like and where that number, what it would cost a homeowner, or does it, or is it like the question I asked once before when I didn't know what was going on a little bit, where, where the, the value of your home, like, and there's so many variables that it's not a question you can even ask. Is that correct? I think probably. that would probably be your uh, answer if we In which case, I'm sorry I took us down this entirely wrong no, totally, Because <laughs> I think that was also what Andy was asking, uh -huh. wanting to know a dollar amount of a right. policy. But you can't, you can't come to that. The variables are all over. Too many. All right, so we have two things to approve at this point. Is there any further discussion before we go any, go any further? Questions, comments? Andy. Just Maybe you're going there next, but the, from a procedural standpoint, you said there's two things to approve. Well, you had requested that we rep approve the ordinance separate from the form, which I think no, is No, I was a good asking idea. the question if that was the intent. I wasn't, I didn't know what the intent, <laughs> what, whether, whether we were approving both with one vote, whether we're approving them with separate votes, whether the, the form is at an, a different meeting. I think because the form is separate from the ordinance in terms of we don't have procedure in the ordinance mm -hmm. that we approve the ordinance and then if we're ready we could also approve the form this evening. I think that would be a good procedure to follow. Annie, are you raising your hand? Yes. So if we were to approve the ordinance, is it completely as in that's that? Yes. As I'm we've just gone through. Uh, yeah, Greg. So this is gets into those weird semantics about passing the ordinance. Um, if you pass the ordinance tonight, which is a language required by the charter, yeah. what happens is it kicks off the public hearing process. We've won the public hearing for August, I think it's 19th, 19th. was the date we had. Uh, the language that we approved tonight, and I've captured a couple changes, is what would be worn for the public hearing. And um, after you have the public hearing on August 19th, you can then adopt the ordinance as is. If there are proposed changes after the public hearing, you have to warn it again and have another second public hearing based on those changes. Okay, Annie? Yes. So there's room for, were we to collectively come to different thoughts, there's room for that? Yes. But also we understand that we go through the whole process again. You gotta go through the whole process Understood. again. Understood. Yep. Clarification. Of course. The, the, the form is not, doesn't appear in our regulations, right? Just the right. fact that there is a form is in the regulation. So we don't have to follow that process to approve the form currently, right? That's my the, the way I would read it, and one of the changes I captured in my notes tonight was to change that the form get approved by the select board. So if that language gets captured in the warrant public hearing for the ordinance, we would then have to approve a form at a certain point. I don't think that has to be tonight, but right. you would have to approve that form once the ordinance, when the ordinance takes effect. 
Are you asking about approving future changes to the form? No, no, I'm asking okay. whether we can defer the form tonight, not, not yes. approve the form tonight, since I think there's still maybe an outstanding question about the cost of the insurance, the, 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 the liability coverage. Let's maybe of interest to some members. Um, but if that's, if we don't believe that's an obtainable number, then. That was researched already. Right. Let's, let's vote on, let's vote two times, one on the ordinance and one on the form. And that way we can decide whether we want to pursue that question further on the form or not. Does that make sense? I'm a little concerned about approving an ordinance that references a form that contains stuff I don't want in it. Um, so I'm, I'm well, it's it's fine. I can vote. I'm only one vote. So I think we'll have to take that chance. Yep. Yep. <laughs> right. Andy, did you have your hand up? No. Uh, yes, but you were correct for me to wait. You're good. Okay. You guys are good. All right. Max. Um, to approve the form separately, I think, keeps it out of the actual ordinance right. itself. And if we need to update the form, that's a clerical thing. Exactly. Right? That gets approved by the select board. Though. I don't think it's a good practice to include administrative forms within an ordinance because then every time you change the form, you have to go through the whole process. Right. Not necessary. Right. Is there any further discussion before we move to a vote? We'll do the motion in the second, and then there's another opportunity for discussion. There is a recommendation on the front page of our of this section of the packet. Would anyone like to make a motion based on that recommendation? Yes, I'll move that the select board uh, authorize staff to take necessary steps to prepare for final passage of the revised firearms ordinance, including warning a public hearing to consider final passage of the revised Which firearms. Section. Oh, am I? Go back to <laughs> what page? 5B. Yeah, okay. So keep going. Keep going back. A couple more pages through the ordinance. <laughs> keep going. Keep going. A little more. <laughs> Almost there. There it is. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I want to redo that one. It's on the wrong page. Um, so I, rec I move that the select board of the town of Essex hereby ordain the passage of the revised firearms ordinance and take the next steps to consider final passage of a revised ordinance with the change to line 90 requiring the uh, form to be approved by the select board. Is there a second? A second. Any further discussion? Andy. Just one clarification is if we vote yes on this, what are we approving? Are we, we are approving. The, the amended the, firearms discharge ordinance. Okay, which which then uh, through the public hearing process could be changed again and then that's right. Perhaps, and then reviewed more and voted on again. That's right. So um, and 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 just to be clear, sorry, I know you've said this already. It's okay. Um, there's a vote tonight. Then we have a public hearing, and then we have, we vote again to adopt. To adopt. Right. Okay. So this is approving the language at this point, and then we adopt it. And Later. if we choose at the public hearing to amend it for right. that, we then over. we start yeah. over. Yep, yeah. thank you. Okay, Annie? For the public's knowledge, can you restate the date you said before? Yes, we will. We're going to oh, it within the language. Pending the outcome of this vote, we will warn a public hearing. All right. We have a motion on the table and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. The ordinance has passed four to one. So now our next duty is to warn a public hearing on the ordinance as just passed. That's, passed twice. That's where you get to read the next one. Okay. Would anybody, does anybody have any questions about the public hearing process or actually Greg would you would you mind taking us through it one more time just to be sure sure uh, so now that the ordinance has been passed um, due to that term the select board needs to warn a public hearing 
You talked about doing that on April 19th. August. August 19th, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, August 19th, staff will put together the warning and the language um, based on the changes to the ordinance that you just passed. We'll update that. We'll make it available um, publicly. We will also put together, as part of that notice, the right to petition and the process for that and where people can get more information about it. Um, following the public hearing on August 19th, if that's the date you end up choosing, sounds like it is, you can then accept or adopt the ordinance final passage as it is that night. If there are changes, you would warn another public hearing, uh, I forget if it's three or five days after that, but a few right. days after that is the minimum notice requirement. Okay. Is that clear to everyone? Thank you, Greg. So I, I move that the select board authorize staff to take necessary steps to prepare for final passage of the revised firearms ordinance, including warning a public hearing to consider final passage of the revised firearms ordinance on Monday, August 19th. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? No, no discussion? Questions? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. We have warned the public hearing of the revised firearms ordinance for August 19th. That concludes our work on the firearms discharge ordinance this evening. We have a few other business items to tend to, which you're welcome to stay for. But thank you very, very much for your participation throughout this very long process. And we will see you at the public hearing on August 19th. Um, for, so for the form itself, we're not gonna vote for that. Are we all oh, comfortable goodness. tabling My or because? My apologies, I got ahead of myself. Um, it was not warm. It was not warm. Yeah. So. yeah. So, I definitely got ahead of myself. We didn't warn a separate vote on the form. Yeah, I don't think any of us thought that yeah, I, we were gonna be. We were thinking the yeah. whole thing, but you're right, it's not. We have plenty of time. We have plenty of time because the public hearing is on the, the 19th. So, Andy, your request was to ask staff to do deeper research on the actual cost of policies for liability. Yep. So you would like staff to come back at the next meeting with data, and if not, if data is not available, a decent explanation. Just, just, and just to clarify, it's not the, the to cover a shooting range; it's just to cover five hundred thousand dollars of personal liability. Liability. But there's differences. I mean, there, I, I, I know that. I know that. But I, you know, I, I can, I can get in on, you know, I, I don't have to necessarily have to specify to my insurance company why I want that additional coverage. Okay. I think that's that's. I don't think anybody necessarily like some of this. I, I think I got it. you got it. Thank Just you. no specificity. I, yeah. I have a liability coverage yeah. policy through yeah. American Family. Yeah. I can ask. You know, make th we can make three to five calls of regular. You know, known yeah, agencies you. and say what is a five hundred thousand dollar liability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I'm. I'm. Yeah. I would like it to know a ballpark number. Like that. It. It does concern me that. You know, with respect to some of the people in the audience who mentioned it, that anyone who is hunting squirrels to feed their family probably is not going to be able to afford a $500,000 insurance uh, policy, and that may influence whether or not I think that that should be on the final form. All right. And the, sorry, then the other thing is the E911 question. The E911. Um, Specification that we were are either we either need to have a discussion about whether we're going to opt in or opt out as the chief recommended as a whole as a whole to put everybody on the E nine one one or whether there's a legal reason why we can't do it. Just I'd like to have that specified on the form so that landowners know or property owners. Thank you. Okay, so we're tabling decision making on the form until that information comes in. Thank you very much. Okay, back to the agenda. 
Item 5D, update from Governance Subcommittee. Max and Andy, tell us about it. Well, in your packet, there's a memo about the uh, work we did last time we met. I forget what date that was. But we uh, talked with KSV about the first survey and potential uh, some changes that we, we wanted to do on there. Um, and uh, KSV made those changes and then it went live. Uh, the good news is we've gotten over 600 some odd uh, respondents now uh, with a good mix between with 600 yeah over six what was it 640 or something something like that, something like that. and what was the statistically significant number if we could hit the high 300s to 400 that would be considered statistically significant wow. so we're beyond that and that's good news and it's a good mix between in the village and outside the village actually I think outside the village is a little bit higher um, and let's see, then we're going to get together as a subcommittee on um, July 18th to go over the survey and then start um, working on um, screening questionnaire for the potential uh, focus group participants that we have. We're going to have a number of focus groups, some within the village, some outside the village, some mixed. Uh, I believe the locations have already been determined as well. Uh, what else? Oh, and at the uh, July 18th meeting, <laughs> we're going to review the, um, the input from, from all those surveys. So, again, very excited that we have uh, so much participation in the survey. I think that's a good, should be a good sign, I hope. Andy, that's anything? excellent participation. Okay. That's, that's it. Um, well, so, it's a lot of work, but. Uh, will there be, um, will board members have access to the raw data of the survey? Uh, or, or pre do, to do a review of preliminary results just for curiosity's sake? Uh, well, I guess we'll see how it's uh, presented at the uh, thing, and I, we can certainly uh, you know, request that. I don't think they would deny it, but uh, hope we'll put a summary together and, and uh, probably just have the backup material. Okay, That'd be, uh, that would so be you totally can sufficient. Look at it at your leisure, leisure, whatever. <laughs> but that's, uh, I think, all we have. I think Andy's mm -hmm. okay with that too. Yeah. Okay. All right then. You guys have anything to add on that, or? No? We're just pleased with as many responses as we've got in yeah. such a quick. It's impressive. Time frame. Yeah. I, I was thinking with a short time frame, it might be difficult, but right. it's, it's excellent. Yeah. And the summer. Um, on top of that. It was nice to see that the town outside the village response was high. Um, yeah. Back at this point, higher than the village. A little bit. Um, just you know. It's yeah. not wide margin, but no, it's, it's good. up there. Um, some of the some of the preliminary data of the uh, some of the strata. If you could think, why? How do you reach 18 to 35 year olds? And by the way, if you could figure that out, you'd be billionaires. Um, that's one of the the groups that we had trouble. Uh, we didn't get zero, but we just it wasn't up as much as you know, people above 35, but great effort, still going on. Uh, I think they're gonna um, grab the final ones that are in paper, and then they'll start working on the breakdown. Right, awesome. that ends, that closes Close. end of day today. Okay. Yeah. That's great, well done. All right. Um, next item is a discussion of legal matter for which we're going to need an executive session. So I would like to ask the board to, we'll, we'll do that after the rest of the business items on the agenda, if that's mm -hmm. all right. Sounds good. So item six, consent agenda. I, Excuse mm. me. Oh, okay. Um, does anybody have anything they'd like to remove from the consent agenda to vote on separately? Okay, so we'll get a motion to approve and then we can have discussion. Uh, I move that the uh, select board approve the consent items with comments. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Any discussion about the consent agenda? I have one minutes related request. Um, back in my notes the minutes for oh, hold 
on, where were they? June 17th, line 200. There's a sentence that I said something and it absolutely makes no sense to me. So I'm wondering if we could just like cut it out because I have no idea what it meant. Um, yeah, hold on. Line 200 from June 17th. to it in just a second. It's page 35 in the packet. Oh, I, I, I go separately by tabs. I think, if my memory serves, is that when we were talking about the full form, that you suggested that if there were no changes from the last time they previously filled out the form, that yeah. there would be a separate renewal form that would simply state there have been no changes since the last submission. Okay, I think that is what I was saying, but it is definitely not what this sentence says. So. <laughs> Um, I think what I was trying to say was if, if you've already filled out a form and you need, to re you need to renew in two years but you've made no changes, just a simple certification form that says I haven't made any changes. That's, that's what I was trying to say. So maybe if on line 200, um, before the word renewal, add the word simpler renewal form or something. Would that be clear? Okay. That was it. I read that sentence five times and I couldn't figure out what I was saying. So, Other than that, I had no comments about the consent agenda. Anyone else? Nope. Alright, we have a motion to approve and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. On to the reading file. Any questions or comments from the select board? Um, I did have one comment. Let me take a look. Um, sorry, I'm scrolling all the way past the minutes. It's taking a minute for my computer to catch up. See, that's why I do tabs. <laughs> I tried to stop you. I knew where you were. I was like, yeah. Um, in uh, regard to Irene Renner's uh, letter in there, I actually have gone out to Saxon Hill over the last three weeks um, and walked my dogs around there to make sure that I got a good sense of the entire area. So I have the mosquito bites to prove it. <laughs> but just to an FYI for the public is that, you know, I, though I may not have attended uh, you know, the, the specific uh, tours that were going on, I, I did go out there personally to look around. Yeah, and um, I used to live on Sand Hill Road and frequent in the area. Yeah, I've toured that place many, many times. Yeah. So the fact that I wasn't there that one time is meaningless. We're all pretty familiar with mm -hmm. Saxon Hill. Any other comments on the reading file? All right. Um, so all that remains is an executive session. Item 5E contains the motions that are necessary. So do we want to take, do the motions and then take a recess for Scott to break down his equipment or do you want us to relocate like we usually do? We, um, we could certainly relocate. We could just go into yeah. the other room. Sure. So Scott, all right? Another room? As long as there's no one else in there. Mm -hmm. well, the bathrooms and so much of the building extends over that way. I feel I feel a little uncomfortable. Okay, okay. Um, well, then why don't we take we do our motions? We'll take a, f a five or ten minute recess. Let Scott do his thing, mm -hmm. and then we'll you know no rush, Scott. It's all right. If I can find us a location in the next five minutes, would that be okay? Absolutely. My car. Go in my car. <laughs> Andy. Make the motion. Please go ahead. I move that the select board make the specific finding that general public knowledge of pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. I'll second that. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 
I move that the Select Board enter into executive session to discuss pending or probable civil litigation to which the public body is or may be a party pursuant to 1 VSA 313A1E to include the unified manager and deputy manager. Second? second. Is there a second? I'll second that too. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, we are now in executive session.